Yeah, closer you can zoom in, closer to your hand. No, oh, yeah, sure. Wait. A quick video. Cool. Click it. Click it mm -hmm. in three, two, one. So we're doing a two beat. Place our powder. All right. Do one with me actually doing, like maybe, it only takes me a few seconds to do this somewhere. I got I got my client's son doing my TikTok content because I can't do it while I'm recording in here. I wish I had the hands. I'm gonna bring the powder in. Pinch it off. Yeah, you can stop it. Good, thank you. Consistently gonna be working with the powder, get it nice and smooth, smooth consistency. Bring it in the sides, because remember these are slightly C-curved, so. There we go, nice thickness. Now I can work on my cuticle area. myself some time here see that powder marbling clean out the sides with my crimp brush make sure I flush the cuticles so later on I'll have less work later on my cuticle area I don't want to drag too much powder through the nail there. It's crazy when my, all my students watch my lives and they see me do this and they're like, and then in class when I make them do it, they're like, oh my gosh, it's so different when we're in person. And yes, of course it's different when you're in person taking a class rather than watching me. So generally, apex wise, for this length, I don't mind. This is just the right amount that I need. Just scaling out. You don't need to have too thick. Remember, these are C-curved already, so they have a lot of durability. You don't have to build a huge apex when you're using C-curved tips because it has kind of a arch. The name of the monomer is my own monomer. It's Nail Dad Studios monomer. This is a medium setting EMA monomer. You can find it at nail.shop.com. I'll give this one, two, three, and marble. One thing um, people make a mistake with the C-curve tips are they have to build a huge apex or huge thickness. You're utilizing this curveness of the tip to give it that structure. Most, most tips have a lot of structure once they have the curve ready, so you don't have to worry about that at all. You just want to make sure there's enough structure there. It won't break. This is about a long, this is not even XL. XL will be, XL with me cutting a little bit off. That was 2XL, the tip I put on. Bring this powder through because I want a nice and smooth surface because I don't want to do a lot of drilling later, just a little bit of hand filing, get my shape in. I don't need that much powder. My brush is crimped, so if I need to get any powder away from the sides, it'd be easy for me to do that. I used this brush earlier and I forgot to clean it. What a rook mistake. I see where the powder is kind of sticking because I just used it earlier and I forgot to clean it. Because I thought I was done for the day, which is still no excuse. A lot of you guys wonder, how do I get faster now, Dad? Well, guess what? Application. When you do perfect application, you don't have to worry about doing a lot of work later. First, I'm going to grab this piece of acrylic out of here. There it is. Give me one second, guys. I'm going to clean this real quick. I've got a little bit of acrylic. There it is. You make it look so easy. <laughs> I know. Um, it's not easy. It takes time to get to this level, understanding. That's why uh, 
you know, mastery of acrylic is very simple, but it takes time for you to understand the timing, the control. Um, I don't ever let this powder control me. I'm always in control of the powder, you see that? Uh, when I want to move this powder, I'll move it, okay? I'm not gonna let it drip because it's runny. I'm gonna control it. And I know exactly how much time I have. I'm gonna look at the powder and know when to work with it. Bring it in. Because remember, it's C-curved. I can't just leave powder on the side walls. The thicker the powder on the side walls, the more you'll lose your shape when it comes to C-curve tips. These are just non-C-curve, means they're half C-curve. Means it's not as C-curve as the other C-curve tips, so this is a little bit easier for you to do, work with and to keep your shape. One of the biggest issues is keeping your shape with these C-curve tips because you have so much powder on the side here. And if you don't have enough powder on the side there, guess what, the tip's gonna expose. So you gotta be able to really know how to work with that. Yes, they're aesthetically nice, but you have to really know how to work with that. A lot of people will they'll do the flat tips where they'll cut the sides and make it flat. Yeah, they'll give you a nice crisp shape, but structural wise, I don't wanna sacrifice that. That's me personally. Um, anybody else, that's fine. But for me personally, I don't wanna sacrifice any structure for crisp. I can do the same, just gotta do a little bit more work for myself. A lot of babies in the salon today. Got a big baby sitting there, Got a little baby crying over mm -hmm. there. Everything we do here in this process is gonna save us time later, okay guys? Remember that. Spend that extra few seconds flushing the cuticles, making sure it's nice and smooth, will save you from what? Over drilling, smooth, having the file, just like a shape while you're at it. Here, I'm shaping, I'm shaping, I'm shaping. There you go, see? Everything about coming to New Mexico area? Mm. Maybe, I do have a plan to do every, all 50 states, so New Mexico will have to be on that list. I'll be heading my. I'll be heading to Arizona and Seattle next year during the spring. Hey Tracy, how are you? If you haven't yet, please follow my Instagram, support my TikTok. I do. Uh, I do videos. I do. Uh, what's that? Duets sometimes. So you post some good nail content, and I have time. I'll definitely do a duet and do my reactions. It's fun. Yeah, that studios TikTok. I was thinking of doing like a mentorship thing on YouTube. A lot of people want to be mentored. I was gonna post like mentorship videos and stuff like that about the business and how to build yourself as a nail tech. And that'll be for my YouTube content because I don't want to replicate the same content on every platform. Yep, I'm using my 14 right now. See how this monomer is not runny, but it's not dry also. I can still work with the powder. I love this monomer. I mean, it's every student that uses it in class have consistently used my monomer henceforth. They get so used to it, they say, oh wow, look, it doesn't run over the place. It gives me time to work with it. You guys see that? I'm still molding the powder even though it looks like it's set. I have to use my brush how it's meant to be used to brush in. Get nice shape, nice structure. What else can you ask for? Come to the Caribbean, I wish. Do you go live on TikTok? Um, TikTok lives, actually, I don't know. I've tried it before in the past, but it's not as, as booming, I think Facebook Live is one of the best live platforms because um, Facebook gives you the ability to share. So it actually gets people, you know, I like to reach new people every day when I do content on Facebook Live. 
So that's one thing that I like about Facebook. Other than that, um, Facebook really, you know, I would definitely use other platforms, but Facebook Lives has a, it has, you know, it's, it's good for what is, is this, to be able to be sharing, you know, someone can run across it and be, get some helpful tips and tricks ask questions follow the platform i do q and a's at night where i answer questions i miss during the day something like that you know so that's one thing why i still utilize facebook as my main platform because I'm most of my followers i started on here so i never stopped here i made a promise back then that i would never stop doing facebook lives and giving content and tips and tricks and stuff like that and answering questions Because on TikTok, you can't share it. It only reaches whoever can see it at that time. And, you know, my platform on Facebook's a little bit larger. I mean, if I had a million people following me on TikTok, I might switch over. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wink, wink. But here on my Netta Studios page, I actually reach millions a month. So that's actually very good. A lot of my videos are saved on here. People are rewatching old content. Very accessible. My students are on here mainly, too. Look at that shape, look at that, ooh, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Give me a quick second so I can do my TikTok content. This is so annoying sometimes, you know, I have to do content for both. But you do, gotta, you do what you gotta do, right? So that probably took me about 15 minutes. I give or take, I'm, you know, talking to you guys, walking you guys through it. So generally, if you were to do it to, on yourself, at home, or something like that, on a client, you should take about 30 minutes also. That's the goal, to keep everything under an hour, you know. So you got to do these, like, 15 minutes per hand. Give yourself, you know, 20, 30 minutes to do other things. Yeah, full session take about two hours, three hours. That's way too long. Are those pre-shaped? Yeah, they're pre-shaped already. Um, these were the coffin C-curve tips, and I cut them down so they're kind of like tapered. You know, I'll bring it in a little bit more, and it'll have a more coffin look, but it's going to suit what I need. And I use the, you see how the natural one, when I put this nude on? It's gonna have a nice nude, right? It's gonna show the color. Sometimes if you have like a light nude and you use clear tips, the clear tip's gonna kind of be like transparent. So your nude, the color may change, you know? Your, your, your nice nudie color might turn into more of like a clear nude or something like that. And that's what you run into issues with. But if you're using these tips for encapsulation, you know, nice, you want the clear look, yes, definitely I have the clear version for you also. But sometimes when I use, um, a cover powder that I want the actual color to show through to be the main base color. I'll use a natural tip because that gives me a little bit of an opaque surface for um, the product to come out this color. Because if I use a clear tip, it won't be this color. I'd have to do it really thick to bring out the color. So that allows me to, you know, not have to play into the thickness. And I like to do my nails just, I don't, I don't, I don't clear cap my acrylic. So in that sense, you know, I want to make sure that I get a nice even layer and that's it. You know, I don't want to have to have to put on too thick or too thin based on the tip. Thank you for everybody that just joined. Go ahead and hit that share button. Just a little bit of application here for you guys. Later on, I'm going to do some French crocodile design with a nude polish. It's going to be fun. I, I just missed you guys so much doing these nail lives, so I decided, hey, let's just do a nail live. I've been busy traveling, you know, next month, I'm gonna be in Texas for like pretty much half the month for in Dallas and Houston for my class. Get that powder out. Thank you for all the love. Hey, UK, should be around daytime UK. I think I have a little bit of powder. I can put a little bit more here. I know I see the little ton of dip. It's gonna be an issue for me later. So I'm just gonna take care of this right now. Boom, just like that. Check your side profiles, you'll be able to see it. Don't be lazy. 
I was issued the cuticle area. That means you have to be able to know how to control your powder. Get your look at the powder ratio down. Make sure you, the bee's not too wet and runny. Um, so you don't have to run into that issue, okay? It's one of the biggest issues that you run into is not being able to control the powder. And if a lot of you guys are using slow setting monomers like um, Valentino, Young Nails, and C&D Retention, Me a Secret, that, that monomer is very runny. My monomer, this is my monomer. This is my monomer. You see that? It looks like it's dry, right? Psych! I made this monomer for a reason. I made it so it's easier for me to work with because I don't like working with slow monomer. Um, working with slow monomer, I have to sit there and wait for it to dry. All that stuff, I don't. I'm not putting too much pressure on this either. Pinch it off. Just smooth out the powder evenly through the nail. Cause I don't want to do too much work later, guys. Work smarter, not harder. If I can do my shaping and everything now, I'm gonna do it now. I see this little bit missing powder here, but that's fine. I just put bring up a little bit more powder, and I'll be able to drag that powder through and make up for that. See, that's my monomer. And this will do it for every powder. It's very universal. And now it's just powder upward to the cuticle area. Tap it down. Seems like it's seized up, right? But you see, I'm like, what? Is he really still molding that powder? Yes, I am. I know, I know my, <laughs> I know my car. No, I know my monomer. I've used this monomer so much that once you use one monomer all the time, you kind of get down the uh, the timing and you understand the monomer and the powder, and then that's when you start, you know, be able to work flawlessly. I don't ship the UK, unfortunately. I ordered a Bob your monomer, and three days before my package came, I ran out. I use another brand, I was so sad. <laughs> yeah, if you use my monomer and you switch back to another brand, it's gonna be so hard. That's what I use, Young Nails. I need your monomer. Give it a try. Yeah, give it a try. I, um, and I'll tell you right now, out of all my students, hundreds and hundreds of them, all of them use my monomer after class. Um, they don't use any other monomer. Does your monomer work well with polymer powders? Like me, a secret, it works with all powders. I haven't had anybody run into the issue with that. This is my size 14, but it's this 14 is crimped. The reason why it's flat like this because I've crimped it myself. I personally crimp all my brushes. So anything you buy from my any brush you buy from me, I crimped it myself. It's my quality control and also my signature. So you know that I've, you know, crimped it myself personally. So it's a fun thing. Fun fact. See, I'm not gonna let it drip. No. I need to let this get to a nice consistency where I can be able to work with it. Even thickness. I don't want to, I don't want to drill a lot, guys. Later, I just want to do some quick hand filing, some quick shaping, and get on with my, my design so I can get this done, go home to my kids. Would you use tips, forms on small nail beds? I don't usually use forms on um, small nail beds. I would recommend using forms because if you know how to use them, because yes, the forms will give you more surface area. But I don't do forms. And technically, I don't really do short nail beds, to be honest with you. It's just, it's just a liability for me. Um, no matter what you do, it's gonna pop off, you know? I, I don't wanna have to, have to work on a client that I know that no matter what I do, how well a job I do, that she's gonna have problems with the nails popping off, lifting, so, you know, I, I prefer not to do short nail beds, but if you have to, go for it, you know? Um, and use forms. Uh, if you use tips, blend the tips down as much as you can. Don't glue the tips up too high. Make sure you have a lot of surface area to be able to bond your, um, your um, acrylic to their natural nail plate and not to the tip, because the tip is glued on with super glue. Wow, that's sexy. 
I think I need a little more powder here though, right here. I see a little bit of a dippage right here. Almost out of monomer. I'm actually gonna give myself a little bit more monomer here because it's getting low. I never pour too much monomer. I just pour just enough. If I have to add more, I'll add more. The reason being is that every time you use a monomer, you're gonna be throwing it out. You don't wanna have to reuse it because the monomer gets contaminated and it won't work as well, okay? You ever see, you ever get to like the bottom of your monomer and it's getting sticky and your brush is getting all gumped up? That's because there's acrylic deposits into your monomer. And then now when you go in here, the monomer, and you go in here, because a lot of guys are not cleaning your brush in between, um, you are you have a contaminated monomer and then the acrylic just sticks and it gets all goopy and, and it's not smooth. Um, just throw it out. So I just use just enough. I leave some for me to clean my brush with at the end and that's about it. I don't pour a whole juice box of monomer for one set because that's a waste of monomer, right? Yeah, 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 a lot of you guys are laughing, but some of you are just looking at yourself like, damn, he's talking about me. I'm the juice box monomer girl. Yep, I've seen it. I've seen people pour like a whole juice box with monomer for one set and then they have to throw it out. You can't reuse that, even if you wanted to. Limit, and I think one of the things you gotta limit your container. Limit how much, how well, how big your container is. I think when we have a big container of monomer, my dampen dish is about 30 milliliters. Um, I pour half for a full set, long full set, a little bit more than half for a longer one. Any fills, I only pour like a quarter, and I'll add more if I need it. If not, then I don't. Because then I'll be able to save myself some money in the long run there. I can't wait for Texas class and the next year, Kansas City. The first class of the year is gonna be South Carolina, Charleston, and Kansas City, baby. Structure, you see how it's all the same? Can't wait for this to be this good? Yeah, you'll get even better than me, to be honest with you. It took me a long time to get here. Nowadays, in this generation of nails, era of nails, you can get this good in about two years. Some diligence, experience, and practice, and understanding. Take a nail dad class or two. <laughs> I've been really getting really good results with my nail salon ready classes. A lot of my students are like, wow, my clients are noticing how fast, much faster I am when I'm doing nails. They're kind of shocked. I'm like, yeah. Before they're spending two hours with you, now they're spending an hour, they're gonna know the difference. As long as they're getting the same quality nails, who's to complain? Now they have an extra hour to do whatever they want. Now you have an extra hour to do designs without going over two hours, right? When your clients notice your your progress, that means you've gotten your you you're you're doing the right thing. So a lot of my a lot of my students after my salon ready class are just messaging me it's like, hey, you know my clients are really telling me, asking me like, oh, you've gotten so much faster. And I tell them, don't say you've gotten faster. Just say I became more efficient. Because when you say when you start to say the word faster, they think you're speeding up, and they they might think that you're you're lacking in quality. But when you tell them I became more efficient, they're like, oh, that's a fancy word for being quick. Efficiency. Yes, here, take this hundred dollar. Get your efficient ass. Excess under there, so okay, I'll fill it out. And I'm done. That's application. Guess what this monitor is gonna be used for? Cleaning my brush. This brush is probably six to seven months old. I just feather through my brush like this, and if I feel any chunks of acrylic, then I know that there's acrylic there. But if you see how the brush just feathers through without sticking up, then you're good to go. Okay? You feel it sticking together, not feathering through, that means you gotta just keep dipping in the monomer and Get it out. Reshape my brush the way I want it. Remember, see how I crimped it? You still gotta train it. I train my brush to be this flat. And it's gonna stay that way. 
and then I take the rest of this Monroe, which is nothing. Nothing. Look at that. It's, see how it's cloudy? That's contaminated, y'all. And I don't know what the timing is. I think I'm on maybe 30, 38 minutes. 